Okay, I'll do this quickly. Uh, my name is Mary Ann, if I haven't met you. I'm from the CDC, and I'm going to talk about um, our work to uh, build global capacity for WGS uh, through PulseNet International. Okay, so I kind of just went over the objectives for you. And at the end, I'll talk about some of the challenges we've come across for implementation and our, um, our policy for data sharing regarding uh, WGS. So here's uh, an overview of our approaches for sequencing Vibrio cholerae. And this is, applies for more organisms as well. So uh, for applications for the sequence data, we get requests through outbreaks, surveillance, and for research and special studies. Uh, our preferred method for WGS is Illumina Chemistry and their platforms. We use bionumerics 7.6 or higher for the analysis. Uh, and we, uh, uh, we manage our sequence data. The raw reads are maintained by the CDC. And the, data is up, the sequence data is uploaded in real time to SRA, the Sequence Read Archive at NCBI. Those are the FASTQ files. It goes along with limited metadata. And you can trace all of the Vibrio genomes that we have uploaded into NCBI uh, using the BioProject identifier. So here's just an overview of our standardized WGS workflow. I won't go into it too deeply. The blue pieces are the individual steps uh, of the process. The gray boxes are the quality checkpoints that we assess along the way because we do have to implement this into that uh, laboratory uh, capacity to be aware of the QA, QC that's uh, necessary to generate high quality sequence data. And then the, uh, the red bars sort of illustrate the, you know, it's got to pass those quality thresholds uh, to move forward in our process. And then you'll notice the uh, two boxes with the uh, red box, the two blue boxes with the red box uh, built around there, that's the uh, analytical piece of our WGS workflow. And it's a two-part uh, uh, database, uh, a two-step database process that takes place in binumerics. Uh, the first step is what's called the REF ID database. And the raw sequence data comes off the instrument, goes into the Ref ID database, where we do the trimming. I could, should put that. The trimming and the quality checks on the uh, sequence data. Uh, we uh, do a de novo assembly, and then we uh, do we confirm the identification using average nucleotide identity. And all of our pathogens. Uh, all of the PulseNet pathogens pass through this REF ID database. So this covers Vibrio, Salmonella, Campylobacter, Listeria, uh, Eseratia. Um, once the ID is confirmed, it moves over into an organism-specific database where you do the O-group determination, uh, you can serotype, biotype, uh, virulence profiling, resistance uh, prediction, and then for our surveillance method, we're using a combination of CGMLST and WGMLST. Uh, our Vibrio allele database is being validated and will be finalized in next year, 2020. So why use MLST? Well, we compared KMERS, uh, HQ SNPs, uh, MLST, and we landed on MLST. We liked the stability of the allele database, the nomenclature. Uh, we found it computationally easier and faster than the other methods we looked at. And we liked it because there was no need for a reference string. So why use binumeric software for WGS data? Uh, we like it because it's a standardized way to manage and analyze sequence data. Uh, you can get a one-shot reference characterization within the customized organism-specific database, similar to uh, Nick's readout that he just went over. That's the little uh, pick that you see in the bottom right. Uh, that's a uh, report for E. coli because we're not generating it for Vibrio yet because the Vibrio database is not yet validated. But this is what all of the standard reports will look like. 
Um, and we really like it because it does not require advanced bioinformatic skills. So the microbiologist in the laboratory who is doing uh, the, the wet lab sequencing, loading the sequencer, can come back the next day, get that sequence data uploaded into bionumerics, and uh, do that one-shot characterization, uh, confirm that the sequence data meets all the quality checks, and uh, move forward from there. So, and it's highly customized, and it's customized to the point where we can do our NCBI submissions. There's a, uh, a little tool in there. You just uh, plug in the uh, bioproject accessions, um, some, some data, and then the uh, information is automatically uploaded into SRI, SRA. Pardon me. So, uh, here's a little story about PulseNet. So implementing WGS for foodborne disease surveillance, um, why are the PulseNet International Labs moving towards WGS? Uh, it's more precise and provides more information than the current gold standard of uh, PFGE and uh, MELVA. The data can be shared across laboratories for routine surveillance, outbreak identification, AR prediction, and reference characterization. You can learn more about PulseNet International uh, uh, the link at the link below. Here's a, a great pic of our PulseNet international footprint. I won't go into too much detail uh, in the spirit of time. And here's just some fun pictures from of our, some of our recent PulseNet international WGS trainings. Uh, the, on the left-hand side, you see some hot off the presses pictures from uh, a training that we just did in Thailand at the end of March, and we do both the wet laboratory process and the analytical piece. And then at the end, everybody likes the big family shot with the certificate that they completed the training. Um, and that's our lead bioinformatician in the center of the picture over there, Heather Carlton, going over some of the analytical methods uh, with, our, uh, with our colleagues in Kenya. And I want to point out that we, uh, uh, bionumerics, we, we go over bionumerics, but we also take into consideration other tools that might be more feasible for these countries, uh, uh, CLC, some of the free tools that are out there and available. So they learn how to do bionumeric, use bionumerics, and they can also look at their sequence data in that publicly um, more feasible program, less expensive. Okay, so here's a nice picture of our uh, summary of all the trainings that we've done to date. And I had the little red boxes there to remind me to tell you that we go over more than just bionumerics, and I've already done it. I didn't need the little reminder. Um, so here's some of the challenges that we've come across while implementing WGS. Uh, some of these are not anything new to this group. The, avail the availability of reagents is still a problem. Limited ordering options, there's usually only one regional distributor, if at all, uh, and then the procurement delays are very common. Instrument care, maintaining the uh, sequencing platforms are uh, expensive, sensitive, and the maintenance contracts, uh, which we highly recommend, are expensive, um, as I said. Uh, the big, the big, uh, Challenge is the IT infrastructure and the improvements needed to handle and store the volume of the sequence data generated, and uh, especially to ensure the security of that sequence data. Um, the, availability, the availability of analytical to tools, uh, limited user-friendly option, affordable options are out there. Uh, the internet speeds are very slow, so the analysis can take um, quite a long time, and the data transfer can take quite a long time. And then there is a high cost of implementation, and it varies a little bit uh, dependent on the Illumina platform or whatever uh, the country is using. Uh, at the, in PulseNet, we've costed out different chemistries and different platforms uh, with Illumina, and these are the, the latest figures. And I guess the good news is that we do see a consistent drop in the cost of uh, implementing this technology abroad. So for data sharing, um, at the trainings, we do try to encourage our policy for data, data sharing. We can't enforce 
Uh, but we talk about real-time release to SRA and to NCBI, and we show them how to do that through binumerics, and we show them how to do that not using binumerics. Um, and then for a uh, special request, we usually share an interpretation uh, such as a phylogenetic tree because it's really important to see what this uh, WGS data looks like and to know how to uh, interpret what you're looking at. And this is done with um, laboratory and with epidemiologists because we're all in this together trying to learn how to interpret this data properly. And then from our experience, there's a great deal of mistrust of the genetic data being out there in the public realm. So all, um, all we want to do is lead by example from what we learn in this, uh, in this group and uh, with what we are going with right now, and that's the standard policy to upload that in, in real time so it's out there. And then I just want to uh, put some contact information out to the group uh, for any laboratory questions. You could contact me, Michelle, uh, Cheryl Tarr, who some of you have worked with, our PulseNet International contacts, Jenny and Peter. And then I'd like to acknowledge, well, Michelle and I would like to acknowledge our uh, branches for their support in the work that we do and for supporting our attendance at this meeting. Thanks.